here today to tell you guys about some of the books that I've recently read that are coming out very very soon and which I adored or really liked. So the three books I have to talk to you about today are Gemina which is by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the second one in the Illuminae Files series. Another second book is A Closed and Common Orbit which is by Becky Chambers. Oh my god, I love this so much. Let's talk about this one. The final one is The Countenance Divine, which is by Michael Hughes. This is a debut book and it's being published by John Murray. Let's start off with Gemini. I really enjoyed Illuminae when I read it for the BookTube SFF Awards that we recently had. I thought it was just a really imaginative, exciting story. So I'll link my review of Illuminae if you haven't seen that and you want to know a bit more about it. And Gemina is the second one in that series. So this one actually doesn't pick up right at the end of Illuminae. This one's actually mostly told in tandem with the events that happen in Illuminae, which I think is why I didn't love this quite as much. What I really, really wanted this to be was an immediate pick up from the end of Illuminae because the end of Illuminae is a massive twist. A lot of people have said that they don't like the ending of Illuminae and I can see why. I was very intrigued about how they were going to continue that ending and go into book two. They didn't. Basically they don't really continue that ending until like a large chunk of this book is done and then we find out the ending of Illuminae and we find out that the people from Illuminae are involved in this or at least some of them. So this is mostly focusing on a whole new bunch of characters. It is told in the same format as the previous one, so you can see that there are lots of different files and lots of different types, lots of different pages. It's all very exciting. I enjoyed this, but I think it wasn't as good as Illuminae because it just didn't quite captivate me in the same way. In Illuminae, we have an AI and that's actually one of the main characters and you realise that when you get to about the second half of Illuminae, things just get really exciting and crazy. I didn't feel like we had that exciting crazy level with this one. It's still an interesting story, it's still very fast paced. The document style for the formatting is really really good still, I don't have any problem with that. I just think that this story I didn't connect quite as much with the main characters, mainly because they are together on a ship and it's quite obvious to me who's going to end up with who. There is another love situation in this one and there is a love triangle which I never really enjoy. Love aside, because it doesn't completely take over the story, this one for me felt slightly lacking. It just didn't feel like until the ending, where the ending was good, I was quite at the same level as I was for Illuminae with enjoyment. I will say, as I said, the ending is good. I do think that there was a moment of revelation within this that I was like, what? Wow, that's really cool. So there was that moment, which is why this is on a 3, 3.5 stars. It's definitely a likeable read. It's a really easy, quick read to get through. I certainly didn't find myself struggling to want to read this. I definitely wanted to read it and I got through it in about two, three days, I think, just from picking it up and carrying on and carrying on because I wanted to know what's going to happen. It is a very captivating read and it definitely has that fast paced momentum, it definitely has those YA characters with exciting stuff happening to them. I for some reason just didn't connect with the main characters quite as much as those two in Illuminae. However, I'm definitely excited for the third one in the series because I think the third one is going to be where everything really goes crazy and exciting and we see them finally battling this big epic crazy nemesis that we've had hinted at in both this book and in Illuminae. So I think the third one, I think it's the final one, the third one, is going to be where it all kicks off and goes nuts, which I think is why they decided to sort of tell this one a little bit in tandem. This one is based on a space station, whereas Illuminae is mostly based on ships. Still entertaining, still one I would hugely recommend to people to pick up, especially if you like the first, but I think go into this with lower expectations because I didn't go into this with lower expectations. I went into it expecting to get another better Illuminae and I didn't quite get that. So three out of five stars for this one, still very likeable, maybe not quite as good as the first. The next one I have to talk to you guys about is The Countenance Divine, which is by Michael Hughes. I'm going to show you guys this side because it actually has the title down here, um, but this is an ARC copy. And this is a really interesting, kind of what I would call speculative literary fiction, I would say. 
it's definitely not necessarily a fully fledged fantasy story, although it does have elements of possible fantastical science fictional elements. So later on in the story, it could be argued that they're in there, which I think they are. So I would say speculative literary is probably the, the label, if you want to give it that term I would give to this. In this story, we follow four different timelines, which sounds confusing, but it's not really very confusing because each voice has a very distinct tone and a very distinct writing style so it's very easy to tell what period of time you're following. The first storyline we follow actually is the year 1999 and this follows Chris who is a young man who's just kind of trying to do his job. He's working on the Millennium Crisis which is basically a big computer problem that they were worried about when the computers maybe wouldn't tick over to that next zero for the year 2000. And he is working on that. And whilst he's working on that, he meets a young woman called Lucy, who is quite bizarre. She seems as though she's a very nice person, but she might have some mental problems going on. She seems a little bit on edge a lot of the time, but he likes her at first. And so they become friends. She introduces him to a whole host of different historical stuff that he never really thought about, never considered. And then the story skips back in time. And we do get all of the stories coming together at the end. The next time period that we're following is 1888 and in this story we're following Jack the Ripper. We have a load of letters that he wrote about the victims that he murdered and how he murdered them and why he murdered them and it's all very spiritual. He definitely believed in God. I don't know how accurate this is. It's obviously a fictionalised version. I really like the Jack the Ripper storyline. I just thought that was so fun and so dark and grisly and horrible and kind of everything I wanted. So I loved that section. It was just really, really great. Every time I got one of his sections, I was just smiling and kind of disgusted all at once. It's a bit of, bit of both, bit of both. Um, then we go back to William Blake in 1777 and we're following his storyline as he tries to kind of replicate the life of the person that he most admires, which is John Milton. He really has a passion for John Milton's work. He just thinks it's incredible and he would love to find a way of replicating it or bringing it back or doing something that will change the face of the earth and make everything even better and bring Milton the kind of acclaim that he desires. And he definitely has an obsession with this. So you follow him. And the final storyline actually follows John Milton himself and his life and what he did over the course of the life that he had. So you've got those four different storylines, 1999, 1888, 1777 and 1666, all very interesting, all very separate. And yet they do all come together later in the story in some quite weird, but very interesting ways. The, one of the things I'd say about this is, it is weird, but I really like the weird. Sometimes weird is bad, sometimes it's good. This time, the weird is good. It's an odd story. It's told in a very odd way, but it works incredibly well when it's going. And once you get to know who's who and what character's what, I think it's a story that you can quite easily just fall into and be like, oh, this is crazy, this is weird. And then you just start rolling with it and you think, I'm really enjoying what I'm reading, even if it's very bizarre and a bit weird and a bit wacky it's really enjoyable to read. So that was how I felt about this one the whole way through. I definitely like this. I definitely think it's weird. I definitely think it's wonderful. And I gave this a four out of five stars overall. So I'd certainly recommend watching out for this one. The final one that I have to talk to you guys about is this one. This one is so good. It is called A Closed and Common Orbit and it is by Becky Chambers. This is a companion novel to her first one, which is called The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I have no doubt that many of you guys have seen The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet get reviews on Goodreads and on YouTube because it has been everywhere. It has been nominated for loads of prizes and it's just an incredibly awesome, wonderful book. I adored that book. This book I also adored. This book is different because it doesn't focus necessarily on the whole open universe. In the first book we follow a crew as they travel around space kind of on a mission and we see them encounter lots of different alien races from lots of different planets and all sorts of mayhem kind of goes on. In this one, as the title suggests, it's a lot more close-knit. It's a lot more of a closed and common orbit. We're following two different storylines actually. We have the first storyline which is following Lovelace who is an AI who is 
basically escaping where she was made to be. She's an artificial intelligence who is very, very intelligent and wants to not be stuck on a ship anymore. She wants to experience life as a human. So what she does is she manages to get out of the spaceship that she's on. Her hard drive is taken off and she actually gets put into a body that people see as human. However, she is not made to inside this body she has no idea what she's doing so she meets up with a couple of friends who she doesn't really know but she knows their friends and they help to train her and how to fit into society how to deal with what she's feeling how to emotionally connect with people how to basically be a human which is a pretty cool thing to see an AI turning themselves into a human or at least blending in with humanity I really love the character of Lovelace because I think she analyzes so much of humankind in a really fantastic way and she looks at herself and analyzes herself in really fantastic ways. I just think the way that Becky Chambers writes about the immersion from robot essentially to human is so incredibly well done and some of the things she comes up with to explain how this character feels are so creative and so many things I would never have thought of but made that story so much better. So I loved that, I really, really did. The second storyline that we're following is that of Jane and Owl and Jane is actually a young lady who is part of this kind of program. She has been put in this program since birth so she's never really seen the outside universe or world. She doesn't really know anything except her day-to-day -day life and she has been stuck in this situation for all of it. So she works in this scrap field where she has to collect scrap and that's pretty much all she does. It's kind of a society of young girls who are all told to do the same thing and they're all paired up with another one who looks after them. And then one day something happens that makes her question whether her life is really all there is. She doesn't know what's out there, but she knows that something is out there and she wants to know what. So she goes to investigate and of course things go wrong. She is forced to flee and when she does, she finds another AI in a different ship called Owl and that AI teaches her all sorts of crazy things. So the two storylines do of course come together in the end. It is a beautiful touching story as is the first one and it has some real moments of empathy, of sadness, of happiness, of beautiful poignant moments that I just really enjoyed. I wouldn't say that you should expect The Long Way From A Small Angry Planet from this one because it's not that. It is a companion book rather than a follow on. So although you have one or two crossover characters, the story is not going to be the same. It's not the same style of book. This one is much more focused on one planet, one place. It's not a jaunt around the universe. It's more of a look at what we've got here, look at what we need to do, adjust to what we need to do. It's a very insular kind of developmental story. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think it's one of those stories that I just... I loved how creative Becky Chambers was, even on a smaller scale. It's just, it's so good. I think I would pretty much read anything Becky Chambers bought out from now on, because I think this is two books in, and she's proven in both of the two books that she's fantastic at what she does, and she does it so incredibly well and so creatively that I don't think anyone can top her for it. I just think she's genuinely wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and I'm so happy that I had this book early. It was like so exciting. It was one of my top releases of the year so I was pretty sure I would like it and I'm so glad it lived up to everything I wanted it to be because this book is so good. It's just it's so good. Obviously I gave this five out of five stars like come on out it's Becky Chambers. It's the second book in the series. It's fantastic. I just I loved it. So if you can get your hands on a copy on release day I would recommend that you do because it is so so good. It's beautiful, it's fun, it's emotional, it's moving, it's just everything I wanted it to be. Definitely check this out. Of course, 5 out of 5 stars and it was fabulous. So, yes. So good, so good, so good. So, those are all of the books that I have to show you in this video. Let me know down below if you guys have any of them on pre-order, what you're going to be buying, because I think there are some really good ones in this video. I would love to hear your thoughts about any of the series. If I mentioned any that you've read, then let me know what you thought of them. Or if there are any books that are coming out soon that you reckon I should pick up and read, let me know what those are too down below. 
thank you all for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.